Greetings, greeting. Eight. So today we are going to be doing module four, financial literacy, specifically explaining the task 4.8, how it is done. So you will see after we're done with this, you also have to do something yourself. Right, so task 4.8, task which is on page 64 of your textbooks, we are going to do it together. <clears throat> right, the first transaction, there is that one where they say the proprietor, which is on June 1st, the proprietor, Mr. Tendrit, deposited 100,000 as his capital contribution. He was issued with receipt number one, right? So that first transaction, that will be on the on the cash receipt journal. And because money was received, so it is entered in the cash receipt journal. The second transaction on that date, Mr. Tendrit also negotiated a loan for 50,000 rands at 16% per annum with First Bank. He received the proceeds of the loan on this particular day. So again, it's money received. So it's in the cash receipt journal. On the second, we bought consumable stores from Macro and paid by check 520 rands, right? Issued a check number 001. So here it's a payment. So it falls under the cash payment journal. So this is the second transaction on 2nd of June, bought consumable stores for macro and paid a check, 520 issued a check. So this one is a payment, it falls under CPJ. And then transaction on the 3rd of June, right? Part of the premises has been sublet to a tenant DVD rentals at a monthly rental of 800 rent, received half of this amount. So received money, the cash receipt journal. So, because you received 400 rands. Then on the 4th, right, 4th of June, takings to date amounted to 7,200. Uh, that is the cash register tape, 1 to 50. So that one is money received again. So it's cash receipt journal because received takings, which is their income. And then on the 9th, we paid wages. So that one is a CPJ right paid wages and then on the 10th uh, 10th of june paid electricity right deposit of 1200 to the local municipality so it's a payment cpj paid electricity deposit and then on the 11th of june paid for advertisements in the independent newspapers amounting to 780 so again it's cpj cash payment journal and then on the 12th, on the 15th, sorry, of June received the rent owing from DVD rentals plus half of the, for the month of July. So which makes it a total of 800. So we have to deal with that transaction first. So it's a received money. And then again, on the same date takings to date amounting to 16,200 again, CPJ. <laughs> And then on the 17th of June, we bought more consumable stores for macro for 1,115 and paid by check. So it's a cash payment journal. And then on the 18th of June, paid wages of 3,200. So it's a payment, so a CPJ, right? Paid wages. And then on the 24th of June, cash register readings to date, amounted to 28,026 rands. So that one is a receipt, so CRJ. And then on the 25th, right, we see that on the 25th of June, we paid wages amounting to 4,200. So another CPJ entry there. And then on the 26th, Right of June, we bought office furniture from Macro and paid by check 5,500. So CPJ, right? And then on the 28th, right? On the 28th, there are two transactions you can see trade and 
stores and interest on their current banking account as per the bank statement from First West Bank, amounting to 120. So that one is a payment of one, it's interest and sorry, right? It's interest earned, so we received that interest, 120. And then cash takings, again, I received amounting to 12,960, which is CRJ. So you can see here we've done the analysis of these transactions. Now we know which transaction is C, it's a payment, which transaction is a receipt. So now we can now go and do 4.8 and 4.3. You will see that I have got both of the journals here. I'm going to do the entries as and when the transaction occurs. If it is a CPJ, I will do the CPJ entry. If it is a CRJ, I will do a CRJ entry. Okay, so let's start with transaction number one, which is on the 1st of June. So June 1st, we can see that one June, the proprietor Mr. Trendred uh, deposited 100,000 rands is his capital contribution. So this is a cash receipt. We are going to go to the cash receipt journal. Under the, the document number, it's receipt number one. Day is the 1st of June. And then details, Mr. Trendred. And then he, this money is deposited into the bank, 100,000 rand, amount of 100,000. And that is capital. So you can see we make the entries under bank. And then we go to the under sundry because we don't have any column for that. And then we go and put 100,000 and the detail is capital, right? And then also there is a, the second one, which means a, the second one, the second transaction, which is the one where we borrowed money from Trendit, right? Amounting to 150,000. You can see we put 150,000. Again, so here there should be a hundred, right? There should be a one right there. Where is my pen? Okay, where is my pen? There it is, right? So we must have one right there. So to make it a hundred thousand rand. Okay, so moving on, right? And then, Right, so supposed to be West Bank. That was supposed to be a hundred fifty thousand rent. Oh my god! Right there we go. It's supposed to be fifty, not a hundred. Thank you very much. Moving on, transaction number three. We see that on two June, bought consumable stores from Micro and paid a check of five hundred and twenty rands. Issued a check of check number zero zero one. So that one is a check. Is a cash payment. So we can see that we do document number one, check number 0 0.001, day two, details macro, bank 520, wages, nothing there, but under consumables, put 520. The next transaction on the 3rd of June paid of the premises, right? Part of the premises has been sublet to a tenant DVD rentals at a monthly rental of 800 rands right received half of this amount right so we are going to put a cash receipt journal entry you can see we have it dvd details the third 400 because it is received at the premises the 400 rands it goes under analysis of receipts and then it is deposited, we underline it so that to show it has been deposited. And then under sundry accounts, we put 400 rents and the details what this money for, this money was rentals, right? Moving on, next transaction. On the 4th of June, takings to date amounted to 7,200, right? And then you will see this one is receipt, so we put CRT1 to 50, which is the source document on the fourth details cash that is uh, received on the premises, 7,200. We underline to show that it has been banked. 
and then it falls under fee income, the core business of this particular company. Okay, moving on, transaction number on the 9th of June, paid wage is 660, so we go under CPJ, we put the entry, so document number, check number 0 0.002 on the, on the 9th, my details, you can put cash or wages, and then it goes under bank and it goes under wages, which is a common expense of the business. Next transaction on the 10th of June, paid electricity deposit of 1,200 to the local municipality. So CPJ, we do the entry and we make sure that we go under sundry accounts and we write 1,200, this is electricity deposit. And then on the 11th of June, another payment for advertisements in the independent newspaper amounting to 780. So we make the entry on the cash payments journal, check number 004 on the 11th, independent newspapers is detailed on a bank 780 and under sundry account 780, these are advertisements. And then on the 15th of June, received rent owing from DVT rentals plus half the rent for July, right? And then uh, takings, so that transaction we have to put it first, right? Which is uh, the received balance of the rent and the rent for the next month of July. And then we put the, uh, the received from the income of the business, right? So CRT 51 to triple one, cash 16,200. And now you can see both the amounts, we add them up and then they are deposited all at once. So you don't deposit the DVD rentals first, then you deposit cash. You wait and then you deposit everything for that day. So which means on the bank will be a total amount of 17,000. And then of this 17,000, remember there's 800 rent income and then the 16,200 <coughs> is income. Right, <clears throat> let's continue. And then uh, here we said everything you see. Moving on, next transaction, right? On the 17th of June, bought more consumable stores from Macro for 1,150 and paid by check, right? So there is the, end, the entry in the CPJ. And then into the, at the 18th of June, paid wages for 3,200, there it is. Moving on, right, on the 24th of June, cash register readings to date amounting to 28,026 rands. So that will be, we we'll do the entry. There we go, CRT 1112, 197 on the 24th, detail cash. You can see it falls under fee income. And then on the 25th of June, paid wages, again, by check of yes, 0 0.07. So 25th cash wages or wages now under bank and then goes again fall under wages. And then on the 26th of June, bought office furniture for macro and paid by check. So it's going to be check 0 0.08 or 008, sorry, 26 June from details macro under bank 5,500 and then go under sundry accounts. And then the last transactions on the 28th, paid in stores and interest on their current banking account is per the bank statement from First West, First West Bank of mounting to 120 rands. So cash takings amounted to that. So the first transaction then, interest received, and then we go under sundry accounts, we put the details, this is interest on current account. And then the next transaction, CRT takings, cash, same date, amounting to 12,960. Now it's different, you can, that these two can appear, both of them, in the banking, because the interest on the account already is, is earned directly into the account. But this cash receipt takings, those ones are <coughs> received at the premises and they have to be banked. Okay, so please, now, I hope you have understood. If you don't understand anything, so please replay, replay the video so that you can 
understand what is going on. So basically, here we make that correction is supposed to be 50, right? It's not supposed to be 150, it's supposed to be 50. I hope you can see that. Okay, now, so,